Hi Forrester fans, my name is Peyton Tabor. I'm a junior here at the college. I'm doing the Coaches Show with Coach Cat, where we sit down every week and talk about the previous game and the upcoming one. This week I got to interview him about our past game with against Wisconsin Lutheran and the upcoming game against Lawrence. Here it is. After the first one of the year, Coach, what are some things that you liked and then what are some things that you want to improve upon as there's usually an improvement for teams from game one to game two? Yeah, we're definitely looking for our biggest improvement of the year to be from week one to week two. Um, I think it's starting the game off fast. We were real slow and kind of mudding our way through the opening quarter of the game. And I think that was kind of surprising to me because having had three games in the spring, I thought we'd be a little bit more up to speed. Um, there was definitely a little bit of a feeling out going on. And I think with, you know, changing in play, calling on offense as to who was calling the plays and, and that falling on my shoulder, I think there was just some things we were working through you know, a new quarterback. So I, I think that comfortability level is at a much higher level today than it was, you know, Saturday night. And so hopefully as we go into the second week, that'll be a piece of it. Um, our special teams, which has traditionally been something we're really good at, was really just kind of average. And that I think was a little bit disappointing because I know we have the talent there, but we just have to really work hard to make that a little bit better. And then I think defensively, you know, our tackling was a little bit soft on uh, Saturday in terms of accelerating through contact. We were getting there, we were wrapping up, we were making, I think our guys felt that they should have been tackling a little bit more aggressively and being out on that edge. And so if we can do that in week two, um, we should see a marked improvement if we do that. That's good to hear. Um, on offense, you guys were really balanced on running the ball and passing it as well. You rushed for 250 yards and had 229 passing yards. Is that the type of identity that you want your team to have as an offense? Yeah, I mean, running the football has always been kind of a hallmark at Lake Forest since I've been here. Um, and we've got some really talented running backs. I mean, it, when I look at our running back up chart, like everybody's going to know about Armani and about Damon. But what they don't know is we've got four to five running backs after them that are super talented. They just haven't been able to crack onto the field just yet. Um, so I, I think that's a testament to our offensive line. You know, they really were pushing people around, and our tight end group was really getting some good blocks. You saw, I think, six different uh, tight ends get pancakes on the day. And so that's, that's always good. And so running the football, being balanced is good. People can't anticipate what we're going to do. Uh, but I, I do think that as we go into the, the upcoming weeks, it's really about what are teams giving us, what do we see from them, and the way they line defensively, and how can we take advantage of that. I mean, we do have really talented wide receivers, too, and it's just kind of having that delicate balance of making sure they're getting touches to our playmakers. and. I don't want to be cliche, but it really is just that. It's like, what are our teams doing? How can we take advantage of that within our playbook? And then as long as our quarterbacks are making the right decisions, we should be in a good spot. So do you feel it's a situation where you have success when the run sets up the pass or the pass sets up the run, or just they kind of complement each other at different times? Definitely complementary. And I think that with um, the way that we can do some different things in our formation personnel groups, I mean, we're one of the few teams in the country that will play three tight ends at a time. And the fact that they could all be lined up as wide receivers and we don't lose anything there really gives us some advantages. Um, our RPO game didn't hit really well on Saturday. I think that's something that will improve a little bit more as we go through. But our play action passing did. I mean, we had two touchdowns off our play action pass. So I think that if we have those abilities to, to set certain things up, it really opens up the play sheet to be called a lot differently. That's awesome. Um, Coach, you touched on it a little bit, but your defense only gave up 10 points this past weekend. But what else do you want to see them improve upon in this next game? Yeah, I think efficiency. I think that we gave up a lot of long drives and then had to make big plays in the red zone to stop drives. I mean, we had a tackle on fourth and goal at the one-yard line. We had two red zone takeaways. And I think that if you ask our defensive players and our defensive coaches, they don't believe they should have ever been in the red zone. And I think that if they would have had a little bit better execution early on um, in those drives, they would have been three and out and would have had to play so many plays. Uh, I think in the first half we had to play almost 45 to 50 plays of defense. And that's very uncharacteristic of us. We're usually really good at getting off the field on third down. And on Saturday, Wisconsin Lutheran did a really good job of extending their drives, making big plays when they needed to. And we had we were just always like two inches away or five feet away from making a play on a ball or making a tackle. And I think that those kinds of things were uh, you know, what I was kind of talking about, just starting a little bit faster, more aggressive through our tackling instead of waiting um, for guys to come to us to tackle them down to the ground. Got it. Um, usually early on in the season, special teams can take a little bit longer to get going than offense or defense can. But what are some specific things that you want to see improve in the kicking game this next week? Yeah, our kicking game wasn't bad. We, I mean, Logan Person had a great day punting, and we did a nice job covering on that. Um, Kickoff-wise, we had two or three really good kickoffs. Uh, one went out of bounds that, you know, probably a bad kick there. But we've come to the realization that people aren't going to kick to A.J. Jackson. And, and we know that, and that's just kind of where we have to live as a coaching staff. He's, you know, he's your two-time All-American. People are going to avoid him like no else. And uh, they were kicking pooch kicks to our tight ends. 
um, in the return game. So we're getting the ball at the 35 or 40 yard line. So it doesn't show up like we were having these great returns. But if you're starting field positions 35 or 40 yard line, you're pretty happy as a coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the alternative to most of those teams is giving the ball to, you know, Cooper Tomlin at the 40 yard line or AJ Jackson with a full field to run against, they're probably making a wise decision. Um, and for us, we just have to come up with other ways to get creative and take advantage of what they're now going to do to us and be successful there. Awesome. What uh, players stood out to you against Wisconsin Lutheran? Yeah, I would say our offensive line really stood out. I mean, we ran for 250 yards, didn't give up a sack in the, in the passing game. Um, so I think when you see those two things, that's really a, a testament to those five guys. And it was a brand new starting group. That group of five has never played together. And I think from that perspective, that was really, really good for us. Um, Ian Ramey starting at left tackle for the first time as a sophomore, had a really nice game. Um, Trey Stewart, at quarterback, you know, is a guy who hasn't played quarterback in four years on a field in a game. So he was playing a different position at his previous school and coming back here to, to be a quarterback. Um, I thought he had a really nice, efficient game and made a couple of really big plays with his feet. Um, and it was kind of a thing we haven't had here in a long time. A guy that can run, you know, 60 yards or 50 yards on a play and a broken play and make something happen. So I thought that was good. Um, Cooper Tomlin, obviously, five catches as a tight end. Or that's not something we traditionally have here. And so to, to see him have that kind of production um, was a really strong day for him. Uh, we talked about Logan Person as a punter. He was really exceptional after about 38 yards of punt and really changing field position for us. Um, defensively, Danny Baker was involved in a lot of takeaways and was actually named the Forrester Athlete of the Week this week. Uh, but I think there was a couple of other young players um, that we probably got a little bit more. Trevor Land, as, you know, first plays a college football player is a 48-yard touchdown. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, that's going to stand out to the coaching staff. Um, and then, you know, on defense, there were just a lot of guys who played well. Um, Dante Esposito coming back from surgery in the offseason, I thought had a nice nice game, and he had an interception in the first, um, I think it was the third quarter, that was pretty pretty important down the red zone. And so there were just some guys that really made plays. And so guys who make plays always stand out to the coaches. You see them on tape, and you're like, okay, there's five really great plays. And then you go back and you're like, okay, we got plays to work on the other 45 plays. So I, I think we always, as coaches, are, are painful towards our players that way a little bit. Um, but there were guys who had great days, and they just got to build on it coming into this next week. Awesome. Is there anything specific that you're going to expect from these players as the season continues to unfold? Get better every day. I mean, we, we really have to get better every day. That's our Kaizen mentality that we talk about. And to me, if we're, if we're resting on our laurels of the win last week against Wisconsin Lutheran, that's not going to help us beat Lawrence. And that has to be our focus. We've had our time to watch that tape. We've really put Wisconsin Lutheran to bed. We won't think about them again until week one of next year because that's when we play them again. And so mm -hmm. that game doesn't really mean anything about the success we're going to have this upcoming week unless we build upon it. Yeah. Speaking of Lawrence, Coach, will you preview Lawrence for me? I know they won big in their first game against Finlandia. Their quarterback threw for 341 yards, had four touchdowns and no interceptions. Obviously, he's dangerous. But what other areas of their game concern you? Yeah, I mean, DeAndre Weaver's special. We've seen him up close and personal in 2018. Um, we needed to score with a minute to go in the game to beat him as a true freshman quarterback, and he, he exploited us a little bit that day. So um, he's definitely a talented player we have to account for. Um, they have a brand new coach there. I think that can't go without saying. So here's a coach who his first game as a head coach and he gets a 42 to six win, and, and that's that's a big win for a guy who's got that team believing they were playing with great energy. Um, on defense, they have a defensive back named Terrell Myers. Terrell's been one of the best defensive backs in the conference since he got here. Um, he's playing safety for him now, and he does some things um, where he's unique. He's both a physical tackler as well as a great coverage guy. He had two picks in the game, one for a touchdown, and so we have to be cognizant of where he is on the field at all times. Um, they're a little short numbered in terms of their roster size, but the guys they're put on the field are playing aggressive, they're playing passionately. Um, you watch their tape and they're really, really flying to the football on defense. And they don't back down from the challenge of it's us against the world. You know, you can see they've got a little of that mentality of there's 38 guys, 37 guys that are really just committed to winning football games. And they didn't get to play in the spring or the fall last year, so they've had a much longer time away from football. And it didn't look like they missed a single beat. So their coaches did a great job, you know, prepping them for that first game. But they, they have a lot of talented players. Um, their defensive line is just one of the more aggressive, fast-flowing defensive lines we're going to see all year. They just really run around a lot. And, um, you know, they're not the biggest, they're not the strongest, but they got an anchor in the middle of number 90 who's really good freshman form. And then they've got a couple defensive ends that'll just, they'll create havoc by their aggression. So what do you think we need to do to get the victory this weekend? Uh, we got to win the game. No, we, have to, <laughs> we have to go, you know, each play is going to be its own unique challenge. And our guys have to remember that, that what we did, just because we had success on the first down doesn't mean second down is a guaranteed success. 
Um, we will want to run the football just like we did this past week. And then when there are opportunities to take advantage of in the passing game, we have to do that. And then our defense has to really set an early tone of getting off the field early in drives and not letting drives extend and build confidence. And I think that's one of the things that football coaches and football players always think about is that the longer the offensive drive goes, the greater the confidence the offense has. It also starts to put a little bit of creeping of doubt into the defensive mentality. And they may not own it that way, but it does happen where they start thinking, wow, these guys are actually better than we thought they were. Well, no, we just made three mistakes and the drive continued. Mm -hmm. And so they can't see that until they watch the film on, on Sunday. And it's our job as coaches to help prep them to not be in that situation. Coming home from a, your first road victory to the season home opener and your first conference game, what are you as a coach going to want from like the fans and the audience at the game? What do you expect that they'll bring to the table? Gosh, I want them to be energetic and loud. You know, I, I want those. I mean, I love the fact that we have metal bleachers and not concrete ones because as they're banging their feet, we can hear it. And you know, I want them to be up and you know having a great time. I mean, we've had so many restrictions through the spring on what crowds could be here and how many fans and things like that. And the fact that we are back to you know, allowing a more full fan experience. You know, I really just want the families and, and friends of everybody to come out and just yell and be positive towards our team. I think that that's the, the thing that we get to feed off a little bit is I want a lot of black and red in the stands, and I want them to really just be loud. I mean, that's the best thing. I want to be, I want to be so loud that I have to put my headset to a higher volume level so I can hear the play calls. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other part is it's a really special game for us. This is our Heroes Day. And so anybody that's come to the game, I hope what they do is they bring – um, donations for the care packages that we bring and send out to the troops. We average about 40 that we send out every year. And um, this is something we've been doing for about 14, 15 years. And it's, uh, it's really been meaningful to the people that receive the care packages. And so hopefully we can you know, get some support for that too. That's awesome. Well, that's all I have for you today, Coach Kat. Thanks so much for meeting with me and just taking time out of your day to go over all of this. And I look forward to visiting with you next week after the victory against Lawrence. My pleasure. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Go Foresters.